SpaceX's recent Starship integrated test flight, which resulted in a significant explosion, was a bit worse than it first appeared. During a Twitter space on April 29, Elon Musk shared more details about the launch, which he still characterized as successful relative to SpaceX's aims with the mission. When the rocket lifted off, there were three engines whose ignition was terminated because the flight software did not deem them healthy enough to bring to full thrust. Musk said he did not believe those three engines were damaged by the gravel and concrete kicked up by the immense thrust created by the rocket as it slowly lifted off from the pad. At, at liftoff, uh, there were three engines that we didn't, we, we chose not to start, essentially, or that hit, hit uh, aborts. That, and so we, we actually lifted off with 30 engines, um, which is the minimum number of engines. They, 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 those engines did not explode, but they were just, uh, the system didn't think they were healthy enough to bring them to full thrust, so they were shut down. I mean, obviously, the, the rocket stayed on the, on the launch pad for a while, and we did generate quite the rock tornado uh, at, at the base of the vehicle. Uh, and at, our first guess would have been that the rock tornado uh, w would have caused uh, sig you know, potentially significant damage to the engines. But we, we actually do, we weirdly do not see uh, evidence of, of the rock tornado actually uh, damaging engines or heat shields in a material way. But it, it may have, but we have not yet seen uh, evidence of that. So uh, the lean off the pad, was that intentional? Was it more than you thought it might be? Was it related to the engines out? And do you expect to do that um, on like future more operational launches? <laughs> no, we're not. We, the, it was it's related to the engines out. Um, and we, we do not normally expect to lean. Um, it should be going, uh, aspirationally going straight up. Um, so, so for, for the next for the next flight, we're, we're we're gonna start the engines faster and get off the pad faster. Like I think we're from start from engine start to actually moving was around five seconds, which is really a long time to be blasting the the pad. Um, we're gonna try to get that down to about half that time, maybe two and a half seconds. He added that engine number nineteen lost communications at twenty seven seconds into the flight, concurrent with some kind of energetic event. SpaceX engineers are still assessing exactly what this energetic event was. So, so something bad happened at uh, T plus 27 seconds because uh, engine 19 lost all communications um, and, and some kind of explosion happened uh, to, to knock out the heat shields of engines 17, 18, 19, and 20. The, the rocket kept going though. Uh, uh, but if you do not have good en engine isolation uh, and, and, and an engine failure, uh, can domino to other engines or to parts of the stage, then you have a, uh, an extremely unreliable design. So that's why with, with with Booster 7, but especially Booster 9, we've gone to so much trouble to uh, isolate the engines. And so if, if, if one engine goes wrong, it does not knock out other engines or damage the rest of the stage. At, at T plus 62 seconds, uh, we see additional aft heat shield damage uh, near engine 30. How the uh, engine continues to run, and then at t eighty five seconds is where th <laughs> uh, things really hit the fan. Um, we see engine six with a loss of communication uh, to tr thrust vector control. F roughly at, from this point onwards, we we lose uh, thrust vector control of the rocket, so we lose steering at t plus eighty five seconds. This led to the rocket starting its tumbling motion, leading to the initiation of the flight termination system. However, there was a delay of about 40 seconds between the initiation of the system and the rocket breaking apart. According to Musk, this time lag posed no safety issues with the rocket safely offshore, but it is still unacceptable for a system that is designed to terminate flight almost immediately. He said that the vehicle might have made it to stage separation if the super heavy booster had not lost thrust vector control. Musk also addressed the damage observed at the launch site, including a large hole dug by the rocket's thrust. Uh, we're, we're glad to see that there's, there appears to be minimal damage to the launch ring um, and to the components inside the launch ring. Um, and I'm glad to report that the, the pad damage is actually quite small and looks like it can be repaired uh, quickly. He said that SpaceX plans to install a massive water-cooled steel plate under the launch mount to reduce damage to the launch site and eliminate the propagation of concrete bits and dust. We were we were putting down it's basically a water jacketed sandwich. So it's two layers of, of thick, uh, very thick plate steel uh, that that are also sort of, uh, perforated on the upper side, so that you, you have what is basically a massive, super strong steel shower head pointing up, and then the the, the water pressure uh, has coming out of there has to exceed the thrust is exerting on the on the 
the steel plate on the beneath the launch stands. Musk said he anticipates SpaceX being ready for a second Starship launch attempt in six to eight weeks. However, he acknowledged that it might take more time to finish work with the Federal Aviation Administration on the flight termination system and perform other steps required for a launch license. The next launch will use Super Heavy Booster 9, but Musk said that SpaceX has not decided which of the Starship upper stages will fly. Ship 25 is currently at the Massey's test site. The ship underwent a cryoproof test on Friday, May 5. It was the ship's fifth cryoproof test overall. Ships 26 and 27, the vehicles without any thermal protection systems, are currently at the production site. Ship 28 is in the high bay and sports aero surfaces and heat tiles. The next launch attempt will repeat the same mission profile plan for the first integrated test flight. Like I think we've got this time we've got a better than 50% chance of reaching uh, orbit. So that would be incredibly exciting. Well, I'm hopeful we can get four flights out this year, maybe five. I would be surprised if we exit this year without getting to orbit. I'd say it's not it's not a hard it's not a hundred percent probability, but I think we've probably got an eighty percent plus probability of reaching orbit this year. I think close to 100% chance of reaching orbit within 12 months. The goal of these initial flights is to continue to gather data about the performance of Super Heavy and Starship. After the launch vehicle can reliably reach orbit, the next phase of the program will involve demonstrating in-space fuel transfer and reuse of both the booster and upper stages. Musk estimated that SpaceX will spend about $2 billion on the Starship program in 2023, and he doesn't think it is necessary to raise additional capital this year. At Starbase, teams are working round the clock to repair and rebuild the orbital launch mount and other ground infrastructure. The debris around the orbital launch mount has been cleared, and work is underway to fix the damaged rebar of the lateral support beam connecting the launch mount legs. A new door has been cut on the launch mount shielding to access the interior for inspection and repairs. Scaffolding has also been added to the launch mount to perform repair works. The orbital launch tower claddings damaged during the launch are being replaced. The launch tower was one of the ground infrastructures that was least damaged. It looks like the tower arms and Starship quick disconnect mechanism are in good shape and need no major repairs. Teams recently sealed the leak found on one of the liquid oxygen storage tanks at the tank farm with a steel plate. According to Elon Musk, SpaceX plans to replace some of the storage tanks soon. But these are tanks that we wanted to replace anyway. We're going with more of the vacuum jacketed kind of giant hot dog looking tanks. Those are in the best shape and those are what we want anyway. So some of the tanks will be yeah, pr probably removing and replacing uh, with the hot dog tanks. Teams recently removed all six hydraulic rams installed under suborbital launch pad A. They are designed to exert force on the aft section of starships during cryo-proof tests to simulate the thrust of six Raptor engines. It looks like all future starship cryo-proof tests will be conducted at the Massey's test site. SpaceX may use pad A for static fire tests. SpaceX conducted a cryo-proof test of the Starship test tank labeled Ship 26.1 at the Massey's test site. The test is performed to validate recent Starship design changes. The construction of the new mega bay is progressing at the production site. Foundation work has been completed, and the installation of columns and beams is ongoing. Several environmental groups recently filed a lawsuit against the Federal Aviation Administration in a district court in Washington, D.C., alleging that the agency improperly carried out the environmental review of SpaceX Starship launches from Boca Chica. That review, completed in June 2022, allowed SpaceX to conduct Starship launches, provided it carried out prescribed mitigations. The suit seeks to declare that the environmental assessment undertaken violates the National Environmental Policy Act and to withdraw the Starship launch license. The lawsuit argues that the FAA failed to fully assess the impacts on the environment from launches and launch failures, citing the first integrated launch as an example. The impact of the launch on the people, habitat and wildlife is still being evaluated by federal and state agencies and other environmental researchers, alongside and independently from SpaceX. The lawsuit also alleges that the FAA violated Texas state regulations that allow free access to beaches by failing to account for prolonged closures of the highway leading to the Starbase site and the nearby public beach. Additionally, it claims that the agency did not sufficiently consider the Kennedy Space Center and other alternatives to launching from Boca Chica. Musk noted during the Twitter Spaces session that there had been no significant harm to the environment resulting from Starship's test flight. He remains optimistic about the company's readiness to launch another Starship within the coming months. Now, let's discuss some of the biggest updates in the world of science and technology from the past week. 
SpaceX launched the Falcon Heavy rocket successfully for the sixth time, placing three satellites into a geostationary orbit. The 70 meters tall rocket blasted off from Launch Complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center on May 1, after days of delay due to weather and a last-minute abort on April 28. The mission's primary goal was to bring its payload of three satellites into a 35,700 km geostationary orbit. Though the rocket's two first-stage boosters and central core stage are designed to be reusable, none were recovered this time. The high-performance mission required all of the rocket's propellant, leaving no leftover supply for the boost back, re-entry, and landing maneuvers. Both side boosters separated from the core stage just over three minutes after liftoff, and the core stage switched off its engines and separated one minute later. Then the upper stage took over to first place the satellites into a parking orbit and then to propel it into a higher transfer orbit. The primary payload, 6,400 kg Viasat 3 satellite, was deployed around 4 hours and 32 minutes after liftoff, followed by two rideshare payloads. Viasat 3 Americas is the first of three satellites which will make up the Viasat 3 constellation, intended to provide broadband service to North and South America. Viasat 3 is planned to use the geostationary orbital slot at 88.9 degrees west and is designed for an orbital lifetime of at least 15 years. A wide variety of customers will use the Viasat 3 constellation, including individual homes, businesses, and government agencies. The system can accommodate more than 100 megabits per second per user across the target region. One of the rideshare payloads of the mission, Arcturus, with a mass of 400 kilograms, was built by Astronus to provide broadband services to the state of Alaska for the Pacific dataport. The spacecraft, with throughput on the order of 7.5 Gbps, is designed for a lifetime of 10 years. The other rideshare spacecraft, G-Space-1 satellite, is a 16-unit CubeSat built in Denmark for gravity space. The 22-kg satellite is designed to support communication services for the Internet of Things. The Falcon Heavy is scheduled to fly three more missions this year. June will see the USS F-52 mission, August will see Echo Star 24, and October will see the NASA Psyche asteroid probe launch. The European Space Agency launched the Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer, or JUICE spacecraft, on April 14, on an eight-year-long journey to Jupiter. Once it reaches its destination, it will begin probing the gas giant along with the planet's moons, Europa, Callisto and Ganymede. The spacecraft is currently in a two-month-long commissioning phase, during which the instruments will be tested for their functionality in the vacuum of space. According to the latest reports, the spacecraft is currently struggling to deploy one of its antennae, called Radar for Icy Moons Exploration, or RIME. RIME is an ice-penetrating radar designed to study the surface and subsurface structure of Jupiter's icy moons, down to a depth of 9 kilometers. The space agency stated that the 16-meter-long antenna is showing more signs of movement every day, but it has yet to release from its mounting bracket. Now partially extended but still stowed away, the radar is roughly a third of its full intended length. The engineers believe that the anomaly must be because of a tiny pin that probably got stuck and did not allow the antenna to get released. Moving forward, the teams plan to execute an engine burn to shake the spacecraft and carry out a series of rotations to warm juice up and set the antenna free. With two months of planned commissioning remaining, teams have plenty of time to figure out and fix the RIME deployment. Please check out my previous video to learn more about the JUICE spacecraft and its 12-year-long mission. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, so you never miss an episode.